Hey everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Tuesday, December 8th. And from an update on the Ohio State-Michigan game to what employers can actually do in terms of COVID-19 vaccines, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, let's get caught up on what's going on outside. So cloudy skies will take over this week as highs struggle to climb without all of that sunshine around with highs in the upper 50s. So expect some widespread rain on Saturday and a few flurries on Sunday. Our first alert weather team says that next week brings a few more chances for snow showers. So we'll keep you updated on that as we get a little bit closer. But good news for people who have been craving a little bit of that fluffy stuff. And if the rain didn't already put a damper on your weekend, the snooze might. I'm sorry. The big OSU Michigan game Saturday has been canceled, and that's because of rising positive COVID-19 cases and student athletes in quarantine over the past week. So the news actually came just minutes after Buckeyes coach Ryan Day and OSU players met with the press. Day actually had just finished saying that to his knowledge, the game was moving forward. But sadly, here we are. Uh, the game was originally set for a noon kickoff at Ohio Stadium and would have been the 117th time the two rivals faced off and for the 103rd consecutive year. OSU was favored to win Saturday's game by a 30-point favorite, and the Buckeyes have dominated the games in the 2000s. They have a 5-0 record, while the Wolverines sit at just 2-4. to four. And the backlog of pending COVID-19 cases filed in Ohio was cleared finally today, causing a one-day spike in reported cases with 25,721. To be clear, today's report includes both the daily data and the 13,000 backlogged antigen test results, with some of that data dating back to November 1st. So the health department says that the onset date for those cases has been backfilled and appropriately recorded. So after today's reporting spike, we should be all caught up and the case numbers moving forward should paint a more clear picture of what's actually happening within the state. But let's look at some of those other numbers reported today. In addition to those case numbers today, there were 81 deaths compared to the 21 day average of 63. There were 657 new hospitalizations compared to the 21 day average of 351. But it should be noted that 100 of those, roughly 100 of those, are probable COVID-19 cases from those backlogged antigen tests. So keep that in mind when you're looking at that number. And there are 67 new ICU admissions today compared to the 21-day average of 36. And Governor DeWine announced yesterday that the state's current 10 p.m. curfew would be extended past its current deadline, which was set to be Thursday. So DeWine said he'll give more details about what this means at his next press conference, which is also scheduled for Thursday. So that curfew that's in effect as a reminder runs from 10 p.m. until 5 a.m. every night, but there are a number of exemptions like going to and from work, uh, getting essentials, going to the grocery store, picking up food. So that means drive throughs and delivery can continue past 10 p.m., but indoor dining should really stop past that 10 p.m curfew. So it isn't clear right now if any changes will be made to the rules of this curfew once it is extended on Thursday, but we will of course keep you updated every step of the way and the press conference will be streamed as usual, at least on our Facebook page and on our WTOL news app. So let's take a quick look at COVID-19 in the country as a whole. More than 15 million cases of the coronavirus have now been reported in the United States with the most recent million coming in a span of just five days. Johns Hopkins University's coronavirus tracker reached 15 million today. It had topped 14 million cases on Thursday, December 3rd. So again, that was just a five day span. Deaths from the coronavirus in the U.S. have also jumped to more than 2,200 a day on average. Cases per day have eclipsed 200,000 on average for the first time on record with the crisis expected to worsen as holiday gatherings loom in our future. Uh, nearly every state is currently reporting case surges, and while a vaccine appears just days away from getting approval in the country, it will still take some time uh, for vaccines to be available to everyone in the country. And here in Ohio, we are expected to get the first doses of the vaccine next week. But again, most of us will still have to wait months to get it. But what if you don't even want one? And could you be fired from your job if you refuse and they require it? Well, legal experts say yes. 
According to Rima Ina, a Cleveland area employment attorney, employers can require their at-will employees to get a vaccine. And actually, many hospitals already require healthcare workers to get flu shots as a condition of employment. But with everything, there are some exceptions. So people with medical conditions are protected by the Americans with Disabilities Act. She said that if for medical reasons you can't get the vaccine or your doctor recommends that you don't get the vaccine, you could get an exemption. An employee may also be exempt from a vaccine requirement if they have a sincerely held religious belief against being immunized. So according to Pew Research, four in 10 Americans said they definitely or probably would not get the COVID-19 vaccine if it were available. The FDA is expected to approve the new vaccines under an emergency use authorization, which isn't the same as giving their final approval. So experts say employers should keep that in mind when considering their own vaccine mandates. And I want to give you a quick election update here. There we go. Uh, the Supreme Court today rejected Republicans' bid to reverse Pennsylvania's certification of President-elect Joe Biden's victory in the electoral battleground. The court, without comment, refused to call into question the certification process in Pennsylvania. Democratic Governor Tom Wolf already has certified Biden's victory, and the state's 20 electors are to meet next Monday, December 14th, to cast their votes for Biden. Biden won 306 electoral votes, so even if Pennsylvania's results had been in doubt, he still would have had more than the 270 electoral votes needed to become the next president. And while we're speaking of Biden, the president-elect seems to have chosen Ohio Representative Marsha Fudge as his Housing and Urban Development Secretary. Fudge was first elected to Congress in 2008 to represent a district that includes Cleveland, and she had been considered a leading candidate for Agricultural Secretary in the Biden administration. So her intended nomination was confirmed to the Associated Press today by three people familiar with the decision who spoke on the condition of anonymity to avoid preempting the president-elect's announcement. But as news outlets started reporting her selection, Fudge said on Capitol Hill that it would be an honor and a privilege to be asked to join Biden's cabinet, although she didn't confirm that she had been picked. But on a lighter note, the world premiere of a new documentary film on Dolly Parton and the Imagination Library is set for tomorrow. The movie is called The Library That Dolly Built. The premiere was set to be in theaters this spring, but because of COVID-19, it will be shown exclusively on Facebook for free. The world premiere for the library that Dolly Belt will stream live only on Facebook at 7 p.m. And I have the link if you're interested in the description of this video, so you can check that out if you want to tomorrow. And after that, after the screening, uh, it, will, it will be followed by a conversation with and a live acoustic performance by Dolly Parton herself. How fun is that? I love it. So that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen and now you are in the loop.